Hi everybody, welcome back. We're going to continue our talk on our on the physics uh, section. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to uh, start with the sphere collider. Now as you can see, I already got this sphere here and I got a cube. Let me have this cube real quick. That's for, for later this video. I'm going to show you guys what the spring joint does. But for the sphere collider, we could actually edit the colliders. So we could click that and we could edit the collider like this as you can see. Um, we could also edit the collider like this, moving it uh, from the center as we wish, and we could adjust the radius as so. And then there's also its trigger. So if we have its trigger, if something goes through it, nothing will happen. Nothing will bump into each other or anything like that. Uh, this is only useful if you have a script sitting on it or sitting on another component or a game object, and it will tell. It will. Okay, you can have a a script sitting on a game object and you will be able to tell it through code to do something when uh, an object co crosses this trigger or this collider and then we could add a physics material now this physics material you could right click anywhere in your project setting and the assets you know section over here you could go to create and then you could go to physics material and it will just add one of these physics materials and then you could change the frictions and the bounciness bounciness you know for those who don't know in my previous videos it helps like this sphere it will help it bounce friction it'll help it you know slide around the the scene so it'll like slip through the scene and then friction combine and bounce combine takes the two colliders that you know hit each other and it will get the minimum you know depending on what the minimum physics material friction is it'll get the minimum of it the average of it it'll multiply both of those together or it'll just get the maximum so if there was a, a physics material on the ground that was one and there the ball had zero for this minimum it would take the ball because it had zero and uh yeah that's pretty much that for the sphere collider and then we're just gonna keep going for the spring joint now actually i think we're gonna need the sphere collider now for the spring joint, we're gonna open this cube or activate this cube and we're gonna add, uh, let me take the shadows off, okay? And we're gonna add um, a spring, or let's go to physics section so you can see it's gonna be the spring joint. Now with the spring joint, it will add a rigid body for us. So you see there's the rigid body and then it has the, the spring joint. Now we would also have to have a rigid body on this and then we just drag our sphere rigid body or game object onto the connected body right here. And if I got it correct, it should have a spring effect. Hopefully the ball and not the, the actual board. Oh, so yeah, it was the other way around as you can see. But that's how we learn that is by making mistakes. So all we have to do pretty much is erase the spring joint from here, remove it. Okay, so we're gonna try with the, the spear having the spring joint. So what we gotta do is we gotta check it as a kinematic, if I'm correct. Might be wrong again, so let's cross our fingers. So as you can see, with its kinematic on, it will not move unless you tell it to through script, which is ideal. Now I could grab my player, I could hit this, and it will, you know, bounce around like a spring. That's how the spring joint works. Now there's the anchor, so we could actually change the anchor if we wanted to adjust this. I broke the invisible rope, but we could actually change the anchor, so I could give it to be higher or lower uh, the actual spring, depending on how you want it to be. So that, for example, it's now much lower. Um, but if I had it or 0 0.1, it shouldn't be as low. Or maybe it is. But anyways, uh, you could also uncheck this uh, auto configure, and this will also help the the ball not be as low. So as you can see, I'm bringing the ball back up, and now it's not as low. And then we could add more springiness to it 
So as you can see, it's more tense, but if I drop it more low, there's more of a string to it. Drops more lower, bounces more, uh, stuff like that. Damper, it's almost like that air resistance that I talked about um, in previous videos for drag, just dampens the, the motion so it's not as much. So as you can see, it's kind of slow and laggy. If I increase it, it's even slower. It kind of adds like a weight to it. There's minimum distance, maximum distance. So if you wanted to have, you know, minimum distance and a maximum distance where the spring can uh, be at. Tolerance, I think tolerance just says zero to infinity. So let's check this out. Not really sure what tolerance is. Changes error tolerance, allows the spring to have different rest length. So it changes uh, the lengths, I guess, every time. Uh, there's break force, so if you want to be able to break it, just set this to um, a small number, like 10 or something like that. Uh, you could also enable collisions. So if you want this ball to collide with this, you could have this enabled. Uh, enable pre-processing helps to stabilize hard to fulfill configurations. Mass scale, so this is the mass of this ball, the weight of it. Uh, the connected would be this one, so the weight of that. And yeah, and yeah, that's pretty much it for the, the spring joint and the sphere collider. In the next videos, hopefully I will be able to finish this physics talk so we can keep on moving, getting closer to making that game. There's terrain collider and wheel collider. I'll probably just talk about those in the, in the same video uh, with more detail. Well, terrain collider, I could actually cover this real quick. And then wheel collider, that'll be a separate video because it might take a little long. So for terrain collider, remove this and go to my terrain. So my terrain collider is right here for the terrain. And it has a material so I could add a, a bouncing material to this whole scene. So everything in this scene will bounce if it actually jumps. So if I wanted to have a bouncing material to the whole scene, I can. Uh, terrain data, so every time you actually modify this terrain so let's say i i add some mountains somewhere or some spikes you know every time i do that it goes into this terrain data it saves into this terrain data and um, that's what pretty much that is i've never been able to swap terrain data you know with this terrain collider but i'm pretty sure you you can but i wouldn't try it so just leave the terrain data as is don't try to swap in and out terrain data unless you know what you're doing and then enable tree collider. So any, this is any game object that you, you actually place with this uh, paint trees option uh, will enable tree colliders for it. And yeah, that's, now that's finally it for this video. Stay tuned for the next video where we talk, where we're gonna talk about wheel colliders and you know, keep talking about the rest of these components. Talk about playables, rendering, uh, scripts, tile maps, UI, video, you know, new script, how to make a new script, all that stuff. And then after that, we'll make a game. And while we're making games here and there, I'll start talking about all these uh, little options. Start talking about what all these are up here. Most of these are pretty, you know, explanatory, file, you know, all these stuff. But I want to talk about everything that I can. That way you guys know exactly where to go, exactly what to look for. You guys can make your own, you know, game, project, application, anything, you know, you you want to create. So if you guys are liking this video, hit that like button, uh, hit that subscribe button. It mean a lot to me, it mean a lot to this channel. Help us grow, help more people see these videos, help more people learn how to make games and just make the world more fun. So once again, thank you.